Yeah, we've heard of him, right? Rodgers and Devontae Adams have connected for 29 touchdowns over the last two seasons. That's tied for the most by a QB receiver tandem over a two season span in NFL history. Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams have earned first team all pro honors each of the last two seasons. According to Elias, they're the fourth quarterback wide receiver tandem to earn first team all pro selections in consecutive seasons. There's no doubt they're incredibly good together. I have a really fancy touch screen here that we're going to load up as we bring in Jeff Darlington because we're just going to go through some of the options here for this guy, Jeff. We heard from Rodgers. Of course, he's doing the typical Aaron Rodgers thing. People were like, oh, he's going to retire today. And then he's like, no, there's no news. So as we're waiting on some of these pieces to fall into place, what do we need to know about what's next for Rodgers? He's in the Packers jersey right now. Well, yeah, and I think I, I think it's actually very important, Laura, to understand that those around Aaron Rodgers certainly did not expect him to announce any type of retirement today, especially with things actually trending more toward his return to the Packers. Let's not forget that we're less than a week removed from Tom Clements, the quarterback's coach, coming out of retirement to essentially continue to mentor Aaron Rodgers. It's one of his favorite coaches. That being one of the things I'm hearing that is on the quote-unquote list that Rodgers – has that he'd like to see fulfilled in order to make that return. Another uh, thing on that list would be Devontae Adams, getting that deal done. You heard him reference the tag, that being a possibility or a long-term extension, but right now, that's something else that Aaron Rodgers wants to see happen. I also wouldn't think that we will hear the last of Randall Cobb being potentially on that list. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, things still trending toward a return for the Packers, but certainly we can also keep those other elements in mind, like retirement, like the potential for a trade perhaps to the Denver Broncos. And we should also keep open the possibility that another team sneaks in there, like the Tennessee Titans or another team. Let's just treat them as the other here because basically there are still four options on the table. You know, we're going to bring RC in here. For a second, I thought my touch screen wasn't operating correctly or it just really wanted him to stay with the Packers. But as you can see here, guys, very fancy. RC, you can see what he looks like in the Titans jersey or the, the Broncos. <laughs> I don't uh, like it. Touch screen is... <laughs> Obviously, it's for Dan Orlovsky, not for me. Go ahead, RC. Well, you know, the, the big thing you have with Aaron, uh, especially when I hear Jeff lay out those details, is he gave the Green Bay Packers the Bible. Now, what was the Bible supposed to do? It was supposed to take us and give us the rules and the regulations and the list of things we needed to do to get to our Lord and Savior. And who's the <laughs> Green Bay Packers Savior? Obviously, Aaron Rodgers. And so he's saying, these are the things that I need to be the quarterback of your team in 2022. And he also said he needed some things last year. And it seemed like the Green Bay Packers acquiesced to what he wanted. They came out early on this offseason and said unequivocally without a doubt with no question we want Aaron Rodgers back Aaron Rodgers is the quarterback of the Green Bay Packers and we are willing to do what it takes obviously Devontae Adams is a part of that and there are other things on those lists that Aaron Rodgers would want to get done but when you hear him say that the conversations this year were much different than last year I think that also tells you where the Green Bay Packers are here is what's different from two years ago. Two years ago when Jordan Love was drafted, Aaron Rodgers was probably coming off of his worst year as a starter, which still wasn't terrible because it's Aaron Rodgers. Since then, two MVPs, and also we've seen Jordan Love not be ready to take Aaron Rodgers' place. He's in the best position. He's given Green Bay his demands, and I believe he remains there as this year goes forward. Yeah, I think one of the tricky things and why one of the reasons, you know, signs are pointing back to a, a return to Green Bay is that I think it's nearly impossible to assign a trade value to Aaron Rodgers. You look at the last four seasons, no one's played at the level that Aaron Rodgers has played over that type of span. And so when you look back at, you know, other quarterback movement uh, via a trade, look at the most recent. It's Matthew Stafford, which was two first round draft picks, another uh, fairly high uh, draft pick and a quarterback that was drafted one overall and so like what's the compensation for Aaron Rodgers a guy who's much more accomplished 
uh, than Matthew Stafford at the point of the trade. And so I think for a guy that is his age, you're unsure of how much longer he's going to play. He would need a new contract at the new spot. I think he's almost untradeable. Like, and, and so I think that's the challenge for the Green Bay Packers is, you know, you're better off trying to make him happy in Green Bay than trying to figure out how you can find somebody to give you what it would actually, you know, you would deserve to be giving up the guy who's been the best quarterback in the game. You know, Jeff, you just heard Tim there saying he's almost untradeable. When you think about, as I'm playing around on this touchscreen, putting him in the Titans jersey here, what are these teams saying about what might be required? How can you even put a price on Aaron Rodgers to Tim's point? Well, let's be very clear here. Tim makes a lot of good points there. And the one thing we need to point out, though, is that if it got to the point where other teams are now putting their, their trade options on the table to acquire Aaron Rodgers, things went very sideways in Green Bay. Like I said, they're trending in the right direction. But if they were to go sideways, all of a sudden his value, at least from the Packers' leverage perspective, has diminished to the point where they would likely have to unload Aaron Rodgers. We are not there yet. We are far from there. As I said, this is all trending in a honestly surprisingly positive direction between Rodgers and the Packers. So for now, everything's fine. If it goes sideways, though, that's when we should think that a trade could become more likely. Yeah, it is totally different from the narrative of last season around this time, a little bit past this time, when Rodgers was very unhappy with this organization. Doesn't feel that way this year, of course. We keep our eye on it. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.